Hey what's up everyone, welcome to FX Maniac, this is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri again and welcome to uh, another really cool tutorial after a week or so that I haven't been able to make a tutorial for you guys so I'm back and uh, I'll show you guys how to create some cool designs uh, using uh, 3D Studio Max so we're gonna be doing something like this and something a little like this you can go ahead once you know the technique you can go ahead and customize it use a different path and uh, you know some different colored materials and you know create some really cool stuff and this is going to be fairly easy we don't need anything no tie flow no nothing just the built-in tools of 3d studio max so let's get started so here is my scene all right so let's get started i'm just going to save this and i'm gonna go reset yes okay so the first thing you want to do is bring out your logo in this case um, i am typing the letter X so I'm just gonna go into the shapes text and click here and go into the modify panel and hit X and uh, if you don't know the basics of 3 Studio Max you can just go ahead and leave a comment and I will do uh, a basic tutorial on 3d Max if you uh, demand it so let me know what do you guys think so just type the letter X Arial black and I'm just going to rotate it so X again sorry and take hit E and take the rotation tool and hit A to turn on angle snap or you can click here and just rotate it 90 degrees and I want to give it some thickness now so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into the modify panel hit B and search for bevel so for the first one I'll probably type in like 12 for the height and for the level 2 I'm just going to set it to 1 and the outline to negative 1 so then now we're getting this really nice sort of an edge or probably it's a little too much so 0.4 negative 0.4 and now we are getting this effect so we can just go ahead and increase the uh, thickness a little bit so go back to the perspective view and by the way to go to the front view you hit F for the top view T and for the perspective view back P okay and hit F4 or F3 for the wireframe and F4 to show the wireframe on top of the mesh so yeah the other thing I'm going to do is now create these nice uh, little shapes so first off I'm going to be drawing the path that is going to go around this object so it can be any object so I'm just going to go into uh, probably the front view hit F here and I'm just going to draw like here so click and drag don't leave it otherwise it's, gonna, it's just going to go like a, uh, in a sharp corner so just click here and drag so probably I want something like this but then hit P uh, should be here so this should be the top view hit T on here and hit P here for the perspective view right and hit F3 to go to the shaded mode now we want some parts to go in front and the other parts to go at the back so first off go into the modify panel you see the uh, line is kind of a little jagged and broken up so what you can do is you can go into the interpolation set it to adaptive so it'll make it as smooth as possible and then I'm just going to go down here and choose the vertex and move it forward so it's here and choose this vertex so if you go hit F3 you can see that it's there and move it at the back so hit F3 again and this part will surely want it to be hit F3 we don't have any other parts I'm just going to move it at the front right so kind of like that probably move this a bit to the front so it doesn't kind of you know intersect with the object just a little more just like this so now the path is uh, you know we can move this up it is moving like this and going around the object and going there so you can you can go ahead and create some beautiful curves but this is I think okay and to get rid of the selection bracket if you're using an earlier 3, uh, 3D Studio Max version, earlier than 2021, you hit J. But in 2021 or above, you hit Shift J to hide it. So, uh, yeah, it might be a little different. 
so the, the other thing I'm going to do is create these uh, shapes now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create some circles. So go into the top view, create one circle, hit Z on it to fit. And then I'm going to go again into the interpolation, set it to adaptive, and just copy one here, set it to two number of copies, and select them all and copy again. So one here and set it to two. So we have like six of them objects. All right, so now we have these and I'm going to be attaching them or combining them in other words. So you can go ahead, right click, convert to uh, edible spline and then attach multiple and select all these circles except the line because that is this one right here, okay? So what I'm going to do is create another line, a straight line from here to here. Hold down shift and it's gonna be straight. So you click and drag it and then you're going to be using a very cool object. Uh, if you click on the uh, geometry, click on standard primitives and you have compound objects. You have Loft, which is a very old tool in 3D Studio Max. So it basically allows you to sort of take one shape and, you know, extrude it along the other one. So now we have our path, but you want to get the shape. So click on Get Shape and click here. So now this is going to be, those circles are going to be extruded along that path. All right. So the other thing we want to do is we can go into the Loft and we have some settings. So if you go into the surface, so we have uh, a bunch of parameters here. So skin parameters, you can increase these steps and the path steps. So we do need a lot of them. So I'm going to turn it all the way to 100 because the more the path steps, the more smoother it's going to look in the end. All right. And then we have some uh, deformations so you can click on scale. And you can go ahead and scale one part down or just select both of the points and, you know, scale them down. Or you can go ahead, turn off scale and turn on like what bevel. And just like, you know, if you move this down, it'll just create a bunch of weird random stuff. We don't want that. So we just want the scale. All right. So you can just take a copy of it to be there, you know. Uh, just in case if you want to change it again. So just hide this, select this one. Then I'm going to go to scale. I want the end part to be smaller. So I'm just going to select this point and bring it here. So now it is much more smaller. Then I'm just gonna go and convert it to editable poly. And the reason I'm doing that is because I do want to delete these front faces. Otherwise, once we smooth them, they're going to be very weird. So just uh, select this face, delete, delete, delete. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So just rotate around. I'll click and middle drag if you don't already know. Which, if you don't know, I'm not sure how you're following this tutorial, but it's all right. So click, delete. Okay. All right. So now the main part of the tutorial comes. So now I want this to move along this path. So what you can do, select this, go into the modifiers and hit P and make sure you get the path deform WSM and that is world space modifier and not the modifier itself here. So make sure it is WSM path deform and pick the path and just go move to path and chain the axis to X. So now, if I go ahead and increase the percent, that path is going to move along that, these objects is going to move along that path, all right? Which is looking uh, really nice. And, uh, you know, so you can go ahead and stretch them, which is really nice. You can go ahead and chain the path and it will update, you know, in real time. So you select the circle one, sorry, the line one, hit, uh, click the vertex, and you can select this vertex, hit F3, select this one, and move it. And you can see that they're moving very accordingly, right? So hit F3 again. Now the cool thing about this is you have some cool options. So you can animate this moving along that path, but then you can also go ahead and twist them. So it will look really nice. I mean, that is really cool. Okay, and I think the 
objects are a little too big, so you could have unhide this other loft. So just right click and uh, unhide all. So you can take this and probably like take the scale and scale them down a lot more. So just this much and use this one. So just uh, just uh, right click and cut this and delete this and paste it here. So now pick path and then pick it here. And then move to path, right? So now our objects are a little smaller and now they're looking quite better than the previous one, which, which was a lot more bigger. So you can go ahead and increase the percent to animate it along the path. And we haven't deleted the faces to, from this, right? So, but I've already shown you guys, right? So, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and increase this, or you can go ahead and, you know, twist it, whatever you want. Now they're looking a little bit jagged, so you can go ahead and add an, a turbo smooth with two levels, and now they're looking really nice, okay? Yeah. So uh, now I want to create that cool uh, looking material, especially this one. So I'm just going to show you guys quickly. So what you're going to do is uh, delete this. We don't need it for now. And we should have uh, selected uh, before here. I should have selected this uh, object, which I can convert to editable poly. So now here. And I can go ahead and select each and every one of these elements. And I'm just going to be using V-Ray as my render engine. So just go ahead into V-Ray 5 and hit M for the material editor. I'm just going to be creating two materials. So one is going to be red, a little darker, and give it some reflection and some glossiness and just shift drag one here and click on this one and set it to blue so I can go ahead and apply the red here I can select another element select the blue select one then red and the same thing goes on here right so just apply it like sequentially so select this go ahead this one and this the red material and just like you know the opposite right okay so now if i turn on the world space modifier and click on it we have different colored materials and i'm just going to be creating a room so just a box like this much and hit a four right click convert it to edible poly and delete this and I'm just going to add a chamfer modifier, increase the amount, so now we chamfer it a lot, and increase the segments, and add a shell modifier. And now you want to like scale it like infinitely big and move it to the front, just like this. Hit Z on this X, and I'm going to be creating a camera from this angle, so Control C will create a physical camera, and we can zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to select this background and create a material for it. So just like a simple dark grayish material. And one more V-Ray material for the text. So just click here and select it and apply it. Probably dark. But then you want to have some reflection and some glossiness, right? Okay. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some lights here. So uh, hit P and hit Z on this so it is zoom and centered. Going to the lights, go to V-Ray, add a V-Ray Sun. And I want to add like a studio lighting setup. So just go ahead, rotate it like this much. And we want to set it to like target it. So now it's targeted here. And I'm just going to shift drag it to this side and make sure it is an instance so that if we change one, the changes will be brought to all of them. So just like this. I'm just going to go into the options, make them invisible, hit C again, and now let's see how they look. Probably a bit too bright at first glance. So what I'm going to do is just 
decrease the multiplier for one and it'll decrease it for all of the objects and in order to lit make these areas lit so you can go ahead add another V-ray but in this case dome light so now we have it but if it is a little too bright you can go ahead and turn down the multiplier to 0.3 so that we just have that effect which is already looking pretty nice and for this this example I just changed the material I just deleted the dome light uh, because I want it to be a bit darker and hit M and uh, just chain the red material uh, to like greenish or we can probably go with orangish right and go into the self illumination and turn that into an orange color as well and uh, increase it to like what 15 right so now if I just go into the very quick settings and take a quick render it is gonna look pretty nice alright so it's render but we don't really have that glow effect that we had so I'm just gonna go into lens effects and enable the bloom and glow so now you have this uh, really nice effect so you can go ahead and turn down the intensity and increase the size and you can probably go ahead and select one of these lights so you can select one turn it down to like four so that we have more like dark areas and the glow will be a bit more dominant so the more darker the areas the more dominant the glow is gonna look so now it's looking a little bit more better and uh, you can stick with any version that you want so you can go ahead and turn this off or you know as we did in this example so you can go ahead and do whatever you want you can animate it you know and it's gonna it's gonna look really nice so you can go ahead into this select it and animate the percent so it's just gonna grow very nicely so it's just really cool all right so yeah that is basically the today's tutorial it was a very simple one so you didn't need anything just three studio max and you can do it and very of course for the lighting but even though you can use Arnold as well, right? Okay, so this was the today's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you liked it. And if you did, uh, show your appreciation by uh, liking this video and putting a comment below. And if you, uh, if you feel like supporting me, you can definitely go ahead and, uh, you know, hit that subscribe button, it would mean a lot to me. And make sure to support me on my music channel, Audio Aura, so, uh, uh, I do need you guys' support, so just support us by subscribing to our Audio Aura channel and Avex Maniac together. Alright, so this was the today's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it. Till the next one, enjoy working.